wow, you guys got that candy energy. So <laughs> when I found out I was on last, I'm like, they're going to crash. They're going to be all just saying, oh, I can't feel my cheeks anymore. <laughs> this isn't fun, but you guys are still kicking it. This is wonderful. This is uh, amazing, doing comedy at a candy store. <laughs> Like, if my 10-year-old self could see me now, <laughs> he'd be really proud. Like, if I could go back in time at 34 and be like, hey, man, in 20-something years, you're going to get to do comedy at a candy store. And he's like, really? Is it because we're super successful? No. No, that's <laughs> quite, quite the opposite reason. <laughs> but still pretty cool, I think. You know? <laughs> Madison Square Garden? That can wait. Uh, I gotta do some comedy in front of a wall of candy. I love that. I love this candy store. Candy stores just make people happy. You can't be sad here. That's why it's been funny to watch comedians do like suicide jokes for the last hour. <laughs> just surrounded by sweets. Like if, if the pills aren't working, try a Skittles. Like that'll... <laughs> I'm not saying I don't feel depressed. I'm just saying you put some sugar in me. I'm like, <laughs> I'm smiling about it, I guess. <laughs> I don't know if I feel better, but I'm definitely jacked to the gills. Man. I like it. I love this whole setup. I had candy everywhere. And then this just is like a computer behind me. <laughs> just looks like the office center in the lobby of a hotel for no reason. <laughs> what is it? Is this like the Dewey Decimal System with the candy? Like, is... <laughs> Is this the card catalog going, I'm looking for a candy. I don't remember what it was called, but I think I know the author. <laughs> it was chewy, and then it would stick to the roof of my mouth. And it was red, and it got in my teeth. And one time I got kneed in the mouth, and I thought I was bleeding, and I cried. And I, my mother came, and she's like, you idiot, this is candy on your teeth. Can we Google that? Yeah. So nice to be here. I'm a uh, I'm a fellow San Diegan, 34. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm one of you. Yeah. They didn't ship me in from across the country. And um, no, I'm, I'm from, I live over in Kensington. I'm a, <laughs> yeah, I came down El Cajon, took that <laughs> took that terrifying turn on the park. Uh, you know that one where you're like, that can't be the right. I'm, I'm driving into oncoming traffic right now. But nope, this is the right direction. I'm not, I'm not driving head on into a city bus. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> That'd be the saddest death of all time. Comedians old tank has his death. <laughs> Turning into the bus lane. On his way to a gig at a candy store. <laughs> well, this was bound to happen. <laughs> I know, it's fine. You can laugh about it. I mean, after two years of a pandemic, can't we laugh about death a little, you know? So many people died, none of them we met. But... That's what it is, I looked up the stats. You know how many people were killed in America from COVID? A million, a million people. And I travel the country, and it's clear that it wasn't enough. <laughs> we have a long way to go, you guys. A long way to go. Every time I see somebody, I'm like, how did he survive? <laughs> that guy made it? What a weak-ass plague that was. I thought this would clear out some of the riffraff. No, everyone, everyone I disliked, healthy as an ox. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So yeah, man, we got we got rid of the mask last week. That was awesome. No more masks. Just in time for World War III. <laughs> it was perfect. Take off your mask. Put on your helmet. Yeah. <laughs> You'll have more room for the helmet this way. Take off that mask. I wonder if there's going to be people going, oh, you can't make me wear a helmet. <laughs> I'm like, all right, this will work out better than that mask situation. <laughs> No one's making you, bud. Do your thing. <laughs> I'm following the Ukraine situation. I don't understand it. I learned what sanctions are. I didn't, I didn't know what sanctions are. I heard Ukraine's being invaded by Russians and America. We're going to do our best by giving sanctions. 
and by obviously tweeting emojis of the Ukrainian flag, we've clearly done our part, you know? It's in God's hands now, right? We've done all we could. So we dropped off some bullets, and I'm like, I tweeted, we're all right. I learned what sanctions are. Sanctions are where we just don't do business with them anymore. We're like, well, if you keep being me, we're not gonna drink vodka. Well, you don't like that. I figured it out. Sanctions are like when you're in public and you see an unruly child, but that parent won't hit that child. <laughs> but instead, we'll take a knee and we'll be like, if you keep acting unruly, you're not going to get dessert. And he's like, well, I want me. <laughs> and then every time I see that in my heart, I'm like, that's the right thing to do. You know, you're not supposed to hit him. But deep down inside, I'm like, I wish you would smack him in the face. <laughs> that's what sanctions feel like. On the surface, I'm like, you're doing the right thing. But deep down, I'd like you to slap him in his colorless lips. <laughs> have you seen Have you seen Putin's lips? They just look like oh like two severed baby penises <laughs> were pasted on his face. <laughs> they just look like. Are we allowed to say that? We're far enough away. I like how some people are like, "He's here. <laughs> it's all right." I think we're allowed to say it. I don't like him. I don't like him. Because he gives, he gives masculinity a bad name. You know, there's all that toxic masculinity. And I'm not, I, I don't think I have toxic masculinity because I was raised by a single mother and I was hugged a lot. <laughs> I was hugged probably too much. I was hugged a lot. But then they have this like toxic masculinity. I'm like, I don't have toxic masculinity. I just like USC. You know, I mean, I, it doesn't mean I want to punch someone in the street. I just like seeing two people prepared. <laughs> It doesn't mean I, I, you know, it doesn't mean I need a father. It just means I like watching violence. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And the reason we have the term ma toxic masculinity is because of people like Putin, just shirtless on a horse with his man tits <laughs> flopping around, going, I'll start a war. I'll start a war. And you're like, you're ruining UFC for everybody. <laughs> you're ruining it for everybody. I don't know what's gonna happen, but it feels like it's over soon, right? I mean life. <laughs> right, like the world can't keep going forever, doesn't it feel? It feels like we're two and a half hours into a Scorsese movie right now. <laughs> we're just like, it has to be over soon. I don't know how it's gonna end, but I'm gonna be disappointed, but can we? That's my issue. Like, I don't, uh, does anyone miss a 90 minute movie? I miss a 90 minute movie more than anything. <laughs> every move, every, it's like we live in a generation of either the shortest or longest attention span. It's either 60 second TikToks where I'm like, why am I watching this nurse jiggle? You know? <laughs> or it's like, oh, the new Batman's out. How long? It's a weekend. You're gonna have to, you're gonna have to sit in there for an entire weekend to figure out what happened to Batman. And I can't do that, because I turned 35 this year, and it feels irresponsible. It feels irresponsible to sit in a movie theater for three hours while I know that I've just performed at a candy store. Like, I gotta, I gotta get home, work on my career. Like, I don't, I don't have time to just be watching Batman all the time. We gotta, you know. So. And so those are my thoughts and feelings. Um, I'm 34, I, uh, I'm a renter, I'm a, I, I rent. Any other renters in here? Clap <laughs> up. <laughs> those are my people right there. Any homeowners, homeowners? Yeah. <laughs> those are our two political parties in California. <laughs> Right there. It's not Republican and Democrat. It's homeowners and filthy renters. <laughs> filthy lowlife squatting. <laughs> Don't wipe up the water on the bathroom floor, renters. And one percenter highfalutin greedy landlords. That's who we hate. That's where the war is. Meanwhile, Bank of America stays suspiciously quiet in the corner, <laughs> going, no, 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 keep fighting there. Don't look at us. I'm a renter. I want to be an owner. I'd like it. You know, you heard the couple woos. That sounded like confident woos. <laughs> I want that. I want to own. I just want to confidently one day say, get off my property. 
<laughs> you can't confidently say get off my property as a renter, because you don't know, he may know the landlord. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I have to come out and go, do you know Shafiq? <laughs> and depending on that answer, I gotta decide my next move. <laughs> because my landlord Shafiq's a good dude. I don't want to be rude to someone that knows him, you know? I just want that confidence. I don't know, I see both things. Like over the weekend I performed in La Jolla and uh, I feel like I'm at a real crossroads in my life. At 34, I could see either situation happening. Like I was performing at the comedy store and so it's in La Jolla, so I'm driving through, I'm seeing all these mansions and I'm fantasizing in my head and I was actually fantasizing, like one day I could see comedy maybe getting to a level where I could live in one of the big ass houses, you know? And then later that day I drove through my neighborhood and I watched a homeless man beating a bird scooter with a stick. <laughs> and I was like, I could also see that happening just as clearly. Like, it's a real coin toss. <laughs> no matter what, I'm gonna have passion, all right? <laughs> Whether I'm wearing a bedazzled robe coming out of a mansion, just going, woo, or just insane on the streets. Ah, <laughs> just beating it. That's a big thing. I'm on the next door app, and that's all we talk about is the homeless situation. They're like, we have one. And I'm like, I know, there's a lot. There's a lot, there's a lot. They're right outside my door. They're so close to my house. I'm like, are we sure we're not homeless? <laughs> like, if they're that close, how good am I doing, you know? It's too close. I'm like, well, all that separates us is a... That was my pantomime of the door, by the way. I know, I didn't go to miming school. <laughs> but yeah, that's a big argument. Homeless people, who's to blame? I don't know if anyone's to blame. It's like we all forgot playing Monopoly as children. That's all that's going on out there. It's later in a Monopoly game. Remember later in a Monopoly game? Remember like an hour in, one guy would be killing it, another guy would be doing okay, a third guy would be hanging on, and then your uncle would just be walking around the kitchen looking for something to eat. Because he already ran out of money. That's what they're doing out there. And they're looking at us, waiting for us to join them, but we're still at the board game going, Ugh. Come on, Bitcoin, let's get going. Get me out of this situation. 